In this video, we're going to derive a way to express Green's theorem in the plane uh, in vector notation. Before we do that, let's just spend a few moments and review some of the basic properties of line integrals. As we explained well, a few videos ago in our introduction video on the subject of line integrals, we said suppose we have this curve AB just in the xy plane and in this plane there is a force field and we were moving a particle from A to B so that each point on the uh, plane or each point on this curve there is a force vector associated with it that force vector has a certain magnitude and a certain direction so here we are at one point on the uh, curve and here's the force vector and this can be resolved into a normal component and a tangential component. So imagine taking the magnitude of the tangential component of the force and multiplying it by the differential line segment ds that it is parallel to or tangent to. And that's what we mean by this. Then imagine that we did that for each point along the curve here. Take the tangential component of the force at that lot differential line segment ds, multiply it by ds, and then add all of them up from a to b. And that's what a line integral is all about. Or instead of um, representing the differential line segment as ds, in some textbooks they'll use dl. And then there's another way that we can express it. Here's our curve. And here we have position vectors going from the origin to a particular point on the curve. Here is position vector R1. Here is position vector R2. And pretend that these are very close together so that going from R1 to R2 is a differential displacement in the position vector dr. So if at this point right here there's a force vector associated with it, well dr, the differential displacement in the position vector, that also is tangent to the curve at that particular point. So another way of expressing the line integral would be the magnitude of the tangential component of the force times dr. And the way that we obtain this is by taking the dot product of f dot dr, like this. And then considering the line integral written in this form, it actually gives us yet another general way that we can express the line integral. Suppose that, again, we're just in the two-dimensional plane, and we have, say, a force vector f. It has an i component and a j component. And each of these p and q, as you saw in our previous videos, each of these can be a function of x and y, the p and the q. Now for the position vector, the equation for it is, it's just simply r equals xi plus yj. If we were in three dimensions, we'd have plus zk. Now dr Here is the position vector, here is dr, that would just have the expression dxi plus dyj. Now we say that the line integral can be written as f dot dr. So we have the integral f dot dr, or if we take this dot product, that's the integral of 
p dx plus q dy. Now remember, Green's theorem in the plane was written like this. We are taking a line integral around a closed curve. So we have p dx plus q dy equals the double integral, the partial of q with respect to x minus the partial of p with respect to y dx dy. Where of course, this now is a double integral about the interior of the curve. This is going around the outer perimeter of the curve in a counterclockwise direction. We had a couple of videos where we gave a general explanation for this equation. Then we had a couple more videos where we worked specific examples with it. Now here, this is the general expression here on this side, this could be dy dx. You haven't put any limits on these integrals yet. But of course, this stays the same. The partial of q with respect to x minus the partial of p with respect to y. What we're going to do now is find a way to write this in vector notation. To do that, we want to take the curl of vector f. And remember, it was one of our very first um, videos in this series, the curl of a vector, in this case vector f, we write it in determinate form where we have the components, this is of course the del operator, Then the very top row are the unit vectors i, j, k. Then on the bottom row, we have the components of vector f, which is p and q. There is 0 for the z, k component. So we have p, which is a function of x and y, and q, a function of x and y. We'll leave that blank because that's zero. So we want to take this determinant. So the i component, we cover up the first column and the first row, and we have this two by two subdeterminant. This times zero is zero minus the partial of q with respect to z. So we have minus partial of q with respect to z. q itself is a function of x and y. So this derivative is 0. This is a function of x and y. You can't take a derivative with respect to z. There is no z here. So that's 0. Then we have minus the jth component. And to obtain that, cover up the first row, cover up the middle column. We have this 2 by 2 subdeterminant. Here, here, the partial with respect to z, and 0. So here we have this times 0, which is 0, minus the partial of p with respect to z. So we had 0 minus the partial of p with respect to z. And that is the jth component of the curl. But again, this is only a function of x and y. Take the partial with respect to z. This is 0. So a curl for the vector f has no i or j component. Let's see about the k component. So cover up 
this column, cover up the first row, and we are going to have the partial of Q with respect to X minus the partial of P with respect to Y for our subdeterminant here. And of course, P and Q are both functions of X and Y, so we'll get a non-zero expression. So we have plus partial of Q with respect to X minus the partial of P with respect to Y times the unit vector K. Zero, zero, this equals the curl of F. Now, what happens if we take the dot product of both sides of this equation with the unit vector k? So we have k dot k equals k dot This is the unit vector k dot the curl. Of course, k dot k is just 1. So this is k dot the curl vector, dot the curl of the vector f. And this right here is what we have right here. So in this double integral, this can be replaced with this. So we have the double integral. curl of F dot K and then we have DX DY. Let's make this a little bigger. And this is equal to the closed line integral and we had P and Q but this is also the same thing as F dot dr. So there is a general expression for Green's theorem in vector form. Now, dx dy, that's just a differential area element. We can represent it as dA. And notice we have dA times the unit vector k. Of course, we're taking a dot product here. But when we're using Green's theorem in the plane, and in general it looks something like this, an x axis, a y axis, then we have some sort of closed curve here. And we're taking the line integral about that closed curve in a counterclockwise direction. And then dA, we can think of that as just some differential element within the interior of that curve. But we have at times the unit vector k. Of course, this would be for the unit vector i and j. The unit vector k would be perpendicular to those. So we can replace this with a vector notation dA, meaning we have a differential area here and then pointing out 
like this perpendicular to the IJ plane. So this is quite often how we see Green's theorem expressed in vector notation. Now what we're going to do in the next video is we have yet another way that we can express uh, Green's theorem again in vector notation and we're kind of taking our time to lay the groundwork out with this because what we do in this video and what we do in the next video is really laying the foundation for understanding the divergence theorem and Stokes theorem. So we'll get into those uh, but in the next uh, video we again are going to look at Green's theorem in the plane and find yet another way of writing it uh, in, in vector notation. And the, uh, the playlist for these um, vector analysis videos is featured at the website digital-university.org.